Hello friends, welcome to Physics with Ben. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share my videos. I am deeply sorry for not producing content on this channel this long. However, I am back again and in today's video, we shall look at a brand new topic, the concepts of motion. I've gone through the past questions in SNA examinations over the years and I've come to understand that examiners love certain questions from the branch offices called mechanics. And a good number of students don't know how to go about these questions. So I have come to give some clarification. Stay tuned and let's watch to the end. So let's get straight to the point. We'll start with motion. So what do we mean by motion? Motion is defined in physics as the change in the state of rest of an object from one point to another due to the application of an external force. Or, motion is defined as a change in the position of an object from one point to another due to the application of an external force. And this brings us to the laws of motion. Sir Isaac Newton, having studied motion, classical motion, quantum motion, classical mechanics, quantum mechanics, he came to understand that force is the prime mover, force is an agent for motion. Without force, there is no motion. And here he proposed three laws of motion. The first law states, an object will remain in its state of rest or of uniform linear motion until it is acted upon by an external force. What is the meaning of this law? It means that if an object is in the state of rest, the object will not move until the object will be acted upon by an external force, then it will move. It means that when an object continues to move, the object will move forever until it is acted upon by an external force, then it will stop. This, this first law of motion is also called the law of inertia. So, what is inertia? Inertia is simply the tendency of an object at rest or in uniform linear motion to resist an external force. It means that when an object keeps moving, if that object is very big, it will keep moving. Even though there's an external force that comes to stop it, the object will still keep, keep moving. It means that when an object is at a state of rest, the object will want to remain there forever. Even though you come to exert an external force, the other will say, no, I want to remain where I am. So we say that the bigger the object, the bigger the inertia. The smaller the object, the smaller the inertia. We look at the second law of motion. The second law of motion states as follows. That the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the inverse force and it acts in the direction of that force. Mathematically, what the second law is saying is that your F is directly proportional to change in momentum, sorry, change in momentum all over time. And we know that change in momentum is equal to MV minus MU. So this implies that your F is proportional to MV minus MU divided by T. We will introduce a constant K, which is equal to what? A unit mass, or I mean, which is equal to what? One. So we say that our F is equal to MV minus MU all over T. We we'll factor M out and we have our M into V minus U all over T. 
And you know that in physics, B minus U over T defines acceleration. So we say that our F is equal to mass times acceleration. This is the second law of motion mathematically in the units of what Newton. We can call this equation, uh, we can call this equation number one, and then we can call this equation number two. For this reason, uh, if if examiners will ask you uh, what is force, I will explain that when we come to find force later. So let's look at the third law of motion. The third law of motion states that for every action there is an equal and what but opposite reaction. For every action there is an equal but opposite what reaction. So to this we are done with the the first two con content on our board. So let's look at force. What do we mean by force? What is force? What is force in physics? Force is simply an agent that causes the change in the state of rest of an object from one point to another. It is measured in the SI unit of Newton. Force is also defined as a push or a pull. Please, when examiners ask you to find force, don't tell them that force is equal to mass times acceleration. The examiners will mark you down. When you say that force is equal to mass and acceleration, you are defining or you are stating Newton's second law of motion mathematically. Force is simply a push or a pull. And it is measured in the unit of what? Newton. That is what you tell the examiners. Let's look at types of forces. There are primary, uh, there are two main types of forces. We have the contact force, and then we have the force field, or the non contact force. The contact force is that type of force that requires a physical contact with the object with which it acts upon. For instance, push and pull in this case is a contact force. Examples of contact force include friction, pressure, tension, strain, stress. I will produce a fresh video on friction and all of that separates. Force feed. These are forces or this is a type of force that do not require a physical contact with the object with which it acts upon. It is simply known as force at a distance. The effect of this force, of this force is felt at a distance. Examples of force feed include Gravitational force, electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion, and then gravitational force. Sorry, we have gravitational force of attraction, magnetic force of attraction or repulsion, and then the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion. So that those are the types of forces that we have. We want to quickly look at types of motion with their equations. Because these forces causes object to move. The object don't move in one direction, they move in different directions. For this, we have the types of motion and their, and their equations. So permit me to claim this. That types of motion and okay, wait, sorry, wait, types of motion, wait, with 
their equations. When a force is exerted on, on an object and to cause it to move, the object moves in separate direction. In one direction it moves, it, it may move linearly, so we say that is a linear motion. So right, the first one of the list here is a linear motion. Linear motion is simply motion on a straight line. All the vehicles moving on the moving on the road, they are all undergoing linear motion. Motion, the transmission of an object from point A to point B on a straight line. That is linear motion. Good. So, these are the type of equations you will encounter when an object is moving linearly. The first one uh, was MA. We call this, uh, let's call this here as an equation number one. Good. So, when, a, when the force acts on an object, it causes the object to move with a velocity, to move to a distance. It causes the object to be displaced, displacement. The object also moves with an average velocity. The object also moves with an acceleration. All these quantities, all these parameters combined together will give us all the equations we need in this particular place. So the first one is that the object moves the velocity v is equal to displacement all over time. Uh, we can call this equation number two in the units of what? Meters per second. The body also moves with its speed. S is equal to distance d all over t. We can call this equation number three also in the unit of what? Meters per second. You know velocity is a scalar quantity y uh, distance uh, uh, speed. S is, S is a scalar quantity. The object also moves with an average velocity. An average velocity v bar is equal to u plus v all over 2. Also, let's call this question number 4 in the unit of meters per second. The body also moves with an acceleration a is equal to v minus u all over t. We call this equation number five also, I mean the minute the use of meters per second squared. So let us derive the three equations of uniformly accelerated motion. So from here we can make cos of the part from here, we know that our v minus u is equal to what? A t. And our V is equal to what? U plus what? AT. We call this the first equation of what? Uniformly what? Acetyl motion. The body may also move through a distance S, which is equal to what? The average velocity times what? The time taken. We can call this an equation what? Average star. So, we will, we will substitute this and this and get that. So, we know that our S is equal to uh, our velocity is given as what? As U plus V all over T times T. So, we are going to substitute equation number one in this space. So, right now, S is equal to U plus bracket U plus AT all over 2 times t, which is the big brackets. So that your s is equal to uh, this time this we have we have a 2u plus a t bracket t all over 2. You multiply you have your s is equal to 2u t plus a t squared divided by 2. You split the fraction so that your s is equal to your 2u t divided by 2 plus a t squared divided by 2. This row, this row, you have your s is equal to u t plus half a t squared. This is called the second equation of uniformly accelerated motion. 
see, we come back again, we combine this equation with uh, this particular equation here, and we get the third equation of motion. So we do that, we write, do this way. So we write again that uh, our S is equal to V bar times T. No, our S is equal to U plus V divided by T times T. We are going to make T the subject formula in this particular word, equation. And when we do that correctly, we, we have something like this. From here, you can divide both sides by A so that your T is equal to what? V minus U divided by what? A. So we are going to substitute this in place of this place. So we know that our S is equal to U plus V divided by T. Uh, that's V minus U divided by what A. If you work it out, you're going to have your U's, U times V, you have UV, uh, U times minus U, you have minus U squared, and this and this you have plus V squared, and this and this you have what? minus what? U, UV, minus UV, uh, this and this. Sorry, this is supposed to be T. It's supposed to be two. Two here. Good. Two here. So at this and this we have all over two a. This is question that. So mathematically, this and this we strike out. So that you have you are you, you rearrange so that your v square uh, minus u square divided by two a. Good. Divided by two a. So your s is equal to this. You cross multiply, you have your v squared minus u squared is equal to what? 2as. So that your v squared is equal to what? u squared, u squared plus 2as. u squared plus 2as. And this is called the third equation of the uniformly accelerated motion. So for linear motion, this, for linear motion, for a body moving linearly, these are the equations that you will encounter. The, the last thing I want us to look at here quickly is uh, some rules, some, some rules governing linear motion. Just know that when a body, you hear statement like a body starts to move from rest, your initial velocity, take note of the following. A body starts to move from rest, your initial velocity u is equal to what? Zero. A body is moving with constant velocity or constant speed, your acceleration a is equal to what? Zero. A body is moving and it comes to rest or it comes to stop, your v is equal to what? Zero. These things will help you during the calculations. Quickly, uh, you have to know that some graphs are very, very important. Uh, one of them just a uh, graph of V in meters per second square, uh, something like this, meters per second, and then another one, something like this, meters per second, uh, here is uh, your time in seconds, your time in seconds, your time in seconds. This graph simply means the body is moving with constant towards velocity. And so your U in this case is zero. This graph simply means the body is moving with what? Uniform what? Acceleration. And this one means what? The body is moving with what? Uniform retardation or uniform what? Deceleration. So these are some of the stuff you need while working with equations of motion uh, when the body is moving linearly. To this we have come to the end of explanation of linear motion. So permit me to play this quickly. I hope you are enjoying this lesson. So next up we want to look at motion under gravity. Stay tuned till the end of this class 
and you will not regret coming to this challenge. Good. We are done with this. So we are on B, point B now. Motion under under gravity also known as free fall. If I throw this stone up, it will come down. If I drop it, it will fall down. Motion under gravity. So, for motion under gravity, there are three stuff you need to know. For motion under gravity, there are some free stuff that you need to know. Consider a hill like this. And this is your ground level. And this is your height. Good. From the three equations of uniformly accelerated motion, the one I just derived here, you know that um, V is equal to U plus AT. Equation number one. Let me write it more accurate. Your B is equal to U plus AT. Equation one. Your S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. Equation number two. And then your B squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS equation number 3 where U is the initial velocity and B is the final velocity and A is the, is the acceleration and T is the time taken and S is the distance in meters then have a second in meters then have a second so when a body is thrown upward you just know that the final velocity is equal to what? Zero. And your acceleration A is equal to what? Minus what? G. These are the things you must keep in mind when dealing with motion under gravity. When the body is thrown downward, your initial velocity U is equal to what? Zero. And your acceleration A is equal to what? Plus G. So for this reason, we are going to convert these equations into equations for motion under gravity. For this equation, this is congruent to V is equal to U plus minus G T. For this, this is congruent to H. When the body is moving linear, we talk of distance. But when the body is moving up or down, we talk of height. So, our S will change to H, and this H is equal to what? UT plus negative half GT squared. And the last one, this is congruent to V squared is equal to U squared plus negative 2GH. What I'm trying to explain here is simply this. That when the body is going up this way, you make use of uh, V is equal to U minus GT. H is equal to UT minus half GT squared. And then you have your V squared is equal to U squared minus. 2GH. When the body is going up this direction, these are the equations that you use. When the body is coming down, this is what you use. You have your V is equal to U plus GT. You have your H is equal to U T plus half GT squared. Then you have your V squared is equal to U squared. Uh, plus 2GH. This is the difference. A body going up, 
you make use of this. The body coming down, you make use of this. And of course, you, you know that for here, this B becomes zero. And this also becomes what? Zero. You plug in and you make your calculations. Here, you, as I'm working it out, your U here becomes zero, your U here becomes zero, and your U here also becomes what? Zero. You plug in the values and then you calculate. So this is all about this about motion under gravity. We are done with this particular one, continent on the ball. The next thing I want to look at is parabolic motion. Stay tuned to the end of this class. May I claim this space? Yes, I can. So the, the next line of action, parabolic motion or motion uh, projectile motion. Let's write. That is point C. Parabolic or projectiles. Projectile motion. The examiners may ask you, so are this force uh, act on an object, is it also causes the object to move in a parabolic manner? You saw what I did, like this. When you are playing your tennis ball, you are practicing projectile motion. Basketball, volleyball, football, you are practicing projectile motion. When you are watching the world film where fighter jets is trying, fighter jets are trying to aim their enemy at the ground level to project a missile at an angle to tilt down, it is projectile motion. So what is a projectile? A projectile is simply an object that traverses a parabolic curve. So I'm going to draw a diagram to summarize everything about projectile motion. Please stay tuned. Let's suppose that. This is a graph for projectile. Good. And then we have something like this. Good. Yeah, this is good enough. And at this point, we call it our uh, maximum height. And then this point we call it uh, u sine theta. And then this is zero comma zero. And then this wing we call it uh, u cos theta. And then from this point, okay, let's suppose that this is our projectile. The resultant velocity V tangential to the curve. And then at the center here, you have your Vx. Here you have your Vy. Here your V. And then here you have your Vx. Then it comes down again. You have your Vx, then down you have your Vy, and then tangential to this you have your V. Good. And then here the projector lands on the surface again. So from this point to where it lands, to this we call it R. Good. Now, I have explained, and then here is our horizontal velocity, and here is the angle of projection theta. Lovely. So, this is simply the path traversed 
by a projector. Now note the following as I explain that. Note the following. We want to look at the vertical and the horizontal components of a projector, just like we treat vectors in physics. The horizontal component, take note of the following. The horizontal component of a projector remains constant throughout the flight from this point down to this point. Vx, Vx, Vx is called the horizontal component of the projector. It remains constant throughout the flight. So write out our Vx is given as u cos theta. We can call this my equation number one. However, the vertical components of the projector keep changing with time throughout the flight. This is it here. This is it here. And this is it. From here to here, you have the vertical component. From this point to this point. And then from this point to this point, you also have a vertical component. It will interest you to know that the knowledge of motion under gravity is very, very fundamental and basic in understanding projectile motion. Are we good? Yes, we are good. So we write that the vertical component V subscript Y of a projectile is given a U sine theta. Because we say it changes with time and also with gravity, we write plus negative what? G. GT. We call this our equation number two. So it means that when an object is going up, we use Vy is equal to what? U sine theta plus GT. Does that make sense? Sorry, minus GT. Minus GT. When an object is going up against gravity, we make use of this. Coming down, we make use of what? V is equal to what? U sine theta plus what? GT. So this is the, the vertical component for a projectile when it is coming down to land on the point of our projection. And this is what? The horizontal component of what? I mean the vertical co component of a projection while going up. Now, point number two. At maximum height, we only have the vertical component of a projectile. Examiners love asking you questions from this angle. They will ask you to calculate the, the, the vertical component of the projector at maximum height. Simply tell them at maximum height, the vertical component of the projectile Vy is equal to zero. However, we only have what? The horizontal component of the projectile U cos what? Theta. This is what we have at maximum height alone. The next thing I want us to, to look at is uh, the time of flight, capital T, the maximum height, and then the range of a projectile. What do we mean by time of flight? Time of flight is simply the time it takes the projectile to move from this point to this point and then from this point back again. It is defined as the time it takes the projectile to reach its maximum height and then return to the same level with which it was projected. That is the projection was plane. So, the time it takes the projectile to move from here, from this point to this point is given as small t is equal to what? u sine theta divided by g. The time it takes the projectile to move from this point down to this point is given as t is equal to what? u sine theta divided by g. So you see that we have two t's here. So this t and this t combines to give you the time of flight of a projectile. So we write that the time of flight capital T is equal to what? Small t plus small t is equal to what? Two what? T. So we pick one of the t and we say that this is the same thing as what? 
2 times what? U sine theta divided by G. So tau of phi capital T is given as what? 2U sine theta divided by G. We can call this equation number 3. The next thing we want to look at is the uh, the maximum height of the projectile. The maximum height of the projectile is given as h is equal to what? 2 is given as u square, sorry, u square sine square theta is given as u square sine square theta divided by what? 2g. We call this equation number 4. The last but not least is the range of the projectile. The range is given as r is equal to what? u squared sine 2 theta divided by what? g. We call it equation number 5. We call it equation number 5. Now, the last point I want you to note again is this. When does a projector have its maximum range? The projector has its maximum range when the angle, that is R maximum, when the angle theta is what? 45 degrees. And at maximum height, the angle of projection is what? 90 degrees. These are the facts you need in projectile motion. I hope this summarizes everything about projectile motion. The last but not the least, the point I want to look at right now is simply circular motion. I hope we are done copying this. Okay, let's look at circular motion. So these are everything you need in projectile motion. So may I clean this space? Yes. So we are done with this. D, the last point on the ball. Circular motion. Yes, the force. All planetary motion, the Earth revolving about the sun, the moon rotating about the Earth. They are all practical examples of what circular motion. And so, force can also make an object to move in a circular what, manner. And so, we have also have peculiar equations for, 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 for such type of motion. We don't mix them up. So, let's consider this circle with center, with center O and with radius here, another radius here, and climb at this theta, let's look at this at point P and point what Q, so that an object, let's suppose that this object, this particle P, uh, tangential to this curve, moves with a tangential velocity and then with an angular what, velocity. So let's suppose that this particle moves from point P to point Q through a distance S in time T such that the tangential velocity V becomes what S all over T. We can call this equation number one. Yes, of course, when a body is moving in a circular path, there is a force tending to pull the object out. 
and then it's another force pulling the object toward the center of the circle. We call the object, able to move the object toward the, toward the center, centripetal force. And then the object, able to move it outside the circle, centrifugal force. So we write that the centripetal force that makes this object to maintain its orbits and keep orbiting about the circle is given mathematically as this. But before we do that, this object also moves with a centripetal acceleration. So write that the centripetal acceleration A is equal to V squared all over R. Call this equation number two. And you know that from force from F is equal to M A. We can fix this up by saying that uh, F is equal to mass times V squared all over R. So that our F is equal to what? M V squared all over R. We can call this equation number three. Equation number three is simply centripetal force, causing this object to move about the circle. This equation is combined with Newton's uh, law of universal gravitation to solve higher questions, complex questions. The body also has a, a, a mathematical relationship between the tangential velocity and also the angular velocity, given as V is equal to what? Omega what? R. We can call this equation number what? 4. Where you know that your omega is equal to what? Theta all over what? T in the unit of radians per second. And you know that this is, this has to do with what? Radians, animals and radians. So uh, you know that 360 degrees is equal to what? 2 pi in radians. Radians, yeah, 2 pi radians. 2 pi rad. 2 pi rad. So we write that our theta here is first of all 2 pi rad. That is for one complete oscillation. That is to move from this point back to this point. You have one complete circle as 2 pi radians. So we call this one revolution. So one rev, one rev is equal to what? Theta is equal to what? 2 pi rev. So this is the equation that is used to calculate for that. So if, if one rev is equal to this, three rev is equal to what? You use this to get the other values of theta. And then you know that your angular velocity is equal to what? Two pi two what? Pi f. So that you can also use this, this equation to find the frequency with which this object moves with. And you know that your f is equal to one all over t. So it implies that it implies that your omega t is equal to what? Two pi all over t. So that you can also use it to find the period of oscillation of this particle. To this, we have come to the end of this video. When next we meet, we shall be using all these equations to solve questions. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment, share, and call others to join Physics with Ben. God bless you. Bye-bye.